On today's show, the cold call of the wild. The wicked north woods eternally pulls. This Boundary Waters trip offers a rare form of winter misery. Well, snow. Plus, a campfire recipe worthy of Minnesota Bound Morning Fair. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. How's this weather? Stunning. Uh, it makes sense for our first story today. I am a winter camper, always have been since I was a little kid, but I always get asked, what's it really, really like out there? So you decided to go solo into the BWCA to give us a sneak peek kind of behind the scenes of what it's like to travel during the winter off the grid. This is a very heavily trafficked portage in the summer. It goes next to the creek and you can walk right on in. So you'll come out onto Bearskin Lake, go across the point. Will we see open water here? You might, just stay away from the, the shoreline from it. Life's path of least resistance never led here. A trek off the grid and into Minnesota's remote boundary waters. It's a lot of snow. A snow choked landscape where progress at any pace challenges both body and mind. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Travel and time measured in slow, small, calculated steps.
is going to be a nice spot to sleep. My inflator is frozen. Thirty seconds. I'll be done. To settle in and to feel some sense of security. Here, I find myself at home. Coming up, a restful night in the woods leads to a tough day of fishing. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Strike Master, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Ice Castle Fish House and RV. After a February trek into the Boundary Waters with a more than adequate level of misery, I finally settle in for my Alder Lake winter camp. Progress earned with each short step forward. That ambition, that spirit, the DNA of Boundary Waters winter life. here, eternal. The payoff, shelter, heat, and pure, non-polluted wilderness silence. This landscape, this lifestyle, they both draw me deeper into the woods. Always have, always will. forecast a few days ago. 
We'll see. An existence immune from the rest of the world. Why, I will always come home to the wicked winter woods. Still ahead, the story of a fishing guide who never feared winter weather. But first, a hearty Minnesota-bound campfire breakfast. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. We're getting wild in the outdoor kitchen today. I'm here with Chef Jim Kinberg, and if you're a winter camper, this recipe is for you. Chef Jim, what are we making today? Uh, we're doing some fancy French toast. Fancy French <laughs> toast, which is perfect if you're winter camping because you want to make sure you have enough fuel for the day. This recipe takes care of that, yes. I love it. I can see we're using a Dutch oven for breakfast this morning. We sure are. This is actually one of my favorite outdoor cooking, uh, low and slow recipes for sure. Uh, this one's kind of fancy. We're going to actually give this a little flip instead of just the conventional put the hot coals on top and torch. How much butter do we need, Chef? Uh, about approximately two tablespoons should work. Oh, and we got that nice sizzle going. Right. Next step is going to be, I've got some granola, you got it. Um, half of that in the bottom of the pan. How much is this, approximately a cup? That is approximately a cup. That's good, perfect. All right. So next step, if you want to grab that bowl over there, and you'll notice I've got all these ingredients already prepped, ready to go. So it's real quick and easy to put this together. So let's place half of that bread in there. Is this fresh bread or a day-old bread? What this, kind of bread do we need? This is day-old. This is the discounted stuff at your bakery or the stuff you didn't eat fast enough in your house. Even better. Yeah. So next we're going to add our egg mixture, our custard. And what's in the egg mixture? So we have whole eggs, and then we have a little bit of cream, a little bit of cinnamon. Mix that together. Get in there. Into the pan? Into the pan. Get it in there. Uh, I think we're ready for the stuffing. Is that this? That is that. Uh, so once again, it's in the Ziploc bag, and that's cream cheese, maple syrup, and egg yolk. So we just drizzle this over? Right around, yeah. Fill the bottom of that. We've got a black raspberry. These are wild Minnesota raspberries. All right, then we'll just kind of repeat that process. All Looks right. good. You weren't joking when you said fancy. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. We've still got some more bread. We're going to repeat that first step. Right on top? Right on top. Great. Put the remaining granola on top. So we've got everything loaded inside. It's time to put the lid on it and let it go. Time for the baking process. All right, now we wait. Now we wait. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. Ooh, Ooh, I can smell it, so that's exactly what I'm hoping to see. So, I remember before I mentioned we're gonna flip this baby over. Ta-da! It's about 10 minutes on that opposite side, so everything's already nice and warm in there. All right, I think it's been 30 minutes. Ready to check? Let's check. Let's go for it. All right, ready for the big reveal? How do we do? Ooh, I think we did good. This looks incredible, Chef. Thank you. <laughs> An easy recipe to keep you fueled for some outdoor winter fun. Go in and purchase this. Do it, please. So good. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Hewitt Docks, Lifts, and Pontoon Lakes. Leech Lake Area Tourism and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Up next, Travis Frank meets a fishing guide who actually appreciates cold days on the water. Yeah, maybe a little more so than most.
from his weathered boots to his fishing ink. Faith, family, and fishing in that order. Everything about Dan Ricks is one of a kind. Ah, it's beautiful out. More than 200 days a year, he trailers his boat to the river. At 15 degrees, the Mississippi River flows empty and quiet. Most anglers would rather be in a warm fish house. Just another day on the water. But you don't get the nickname River Dan from sitting in a fish house. Right now, I think we can fish something like seven miles of river that's open. There's always a chance to get a big one. That's what I love most about this. On this river, walleyes grow big, and the season never closes. This is kind of a lonely river this time of the year. This time of the year, it's kind of a lonely river, yeah. But it's not lonely for fish. I just love fishing in the boat. It's peaceful. You look around, you got bald eagles up in the tree watching you, and you're just enjoying God's good outdoors. You can't beat it. That didn't take very long. <laughs> Close relative to the walleye. You're the man. It's a beautiful fish. Each walleye Dan considers a blessing from above. It was on a cold winter day just like this that he nearly caught his last. December 2nd, 2006. It was a cold day. It was five degrees out and 12 below wind chill. I figured, well, I'm going to go two and a half miles up the river to fish, hit the throttle to go wide open. Next thing I know, I was airborne. I hit a dead head and I got ejected out of the boat into freezing water at 40 miles an hour. And I had to swim to get to the actual surface of the water, got a breath, and I sunk again immediately because I had my big boots on. So I had to unzip my cover haul and take my boots off. But when I got to the surface the second time, my body was in convulsion because the water is so cold, you're hyperventilating. And I looked to see where I was, and I said, oh my word, I'm going to die out in a stupid river or some stupid fish. And I just kept praying, oh please, Lord, let me make it to shore. Before I knew it, I kicked the bottom, and I turned around, and there's two guys on shore. And they said, come on, bud, you can make it. These are the actual boots that I went swimming in the river with right here. The they day that you went in the water, were there laces on those boots? Yep. And they haven't been laces in the boots since. He wears them as a reminder to keep trudging. Turns out that cold swim was the wake-up call Dan had prayed for. See, I was mad at God because I was mad because where's God when bad things happen to good people? My men's group asked me what they could pray for me for. And I said that God would reveal his power to me and show me that he's real. Well, he threw me in the river. There's my answer right there. And I'm here today, you know, just by the grace of God, I'm here. And I'm using the opportunity to be able to impact other people's lives. Today, he shares his story as a way to encourage those struggling through life's hardest challenges. Every day is a new opportunity to do something. An opportunity for something special. There's a, got a, oh, oh, it's a dandy, it's huge. Nice. <laughs> oh, baby, look at that. Oh, man, look at that. Look at that one. <laughs> that right there, I guess, is why you come out in the middle of the winter. Right. Holy cow. A little cold never felt so good. Thanks to River Dan. Good job. And some help from up above. Ooh, that was a close call. So scary. Good reason to remember to wear your life vest, too. All the time. Well, that about does it for us. Laura and I hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.